After having seen the fundamental principles that underlie true devotion and the types of false devotees that exist, we can now ask ourselves, it is really, after all, that devotion to the Virgin Mary, while useful and recommendable, is truly necessary for our salvation? The question may seem a little idle of interest, perhaps, to a small circle of theologians. It is, however, a question of fundamental importance, since it allows us to dispel some errors concerning the notion of salvation that circulate today. We know from divine revelation that our first parents, by this being they command not to eat the fruit of the tree of good and evil, lost the happiness that God had given them on this earth. This is what we see clearly represented in the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, warred ever since by cherubs armed with a flaming sword. Now, if God had so willed, he could have freely and gratuitously forgiven this first transgression, and thus restored to our parents the happiness which they, through their own fault, lost to themselves an altar offspring. The Lord, however, who is just and full of mercy, wanted to demand a reparation of strict and rigorous justice that would satisfy, on the one hand, the sin of Adam and, on the other, save the human race from the abyss into which it had fallen. For this reason, he decreed to send his own only begotten Son in the flesh, made atonement not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. In fact, only a God who was man and a man who was God could decently satisfy Adam's fault, bridge the infinite distance between earth and heaven, and pay in full, with the price of his blood, the debt we had incurred. That is why, in the strictest and most rigorous justice, the redeeming incarnation of the Word was absolutely necessary for us to be saved. There is, therefore, and cannot be salvation except through Jesus Christ. Now, our Lord's sacrifice was not limited to repairing a fault against divine honor. He was, moreover, the meritorious cause of grace, by virtue of which we became adopted children of God, partakers of the divine nature and inheritors of a happiness immensely superior to that enjoyed by our first parents before the fall. Now if he made us his children, he also made us heirs, and heirs of a very great reward. To be happy like himself, one and three is happy. However, all this great work of love and salvation, God did not want to accomplish without Mary. It was by her, and by her alone, that the only begotten Son came into the world. Because the world was unworthy, says St. Augustine, to receive the Son of God directly from the Father's hands, he gave him to Mary in order that the world might receive him through her. Now, since God, immutable in his decrees, does not change his advice, it is also through Mary that he wants to save and sanctify souls. Now, if it is through the Blessed Virgin that the Father determined, on the one hand, to bring us redemption, wrought by His natural Son, and, on the other hand, to increase the number of His adopted children, it follows that devotion to Our Lady is, by divine disposition, necessary for our salvation and sanctification. This need, however, does not indiscriminately affect all people, as it is a hypothetical necessity, that is, one that is strictly dependent on divine dispositions. Devotion to Our Lady can only be explicitly obliged to those who know her and are aware that the devotion that we owe her is willed by God as means of salvation. Those who to no fault of their own, do not know the true and sweet figure of our Blessed Mother, either because they ignore Christ and His Church, 
or because they have been presented with a distorted caricature of the virgin, can indeed be saved. God does not command the impossible, nor deny grace to those who, fulfilling the dictates of natural law, seek with sincere commitment to follow their conscience and do what is just. And it is only for him to judge the hearts that, although they have never heard of Christ and his mother, could hardly resist the love that this double treasure inspires in us.